Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I'm just one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, with me is... Ashley Mock. I'm having wardrobe problems today. I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start, but welcome to the half-hour program that airs every Sunday on 104.5 The Flame at 10 a.m., but also because of a wonderful partnership with St. Lucie Public Schools. We are also, once a month, a television show on WLX-TV. Find it on your local cable provider or do what I do because my kids taught me this. Just go onto YouTube, look up WLX TV St. Lucie. You'll see all their programming on there. And of course, check out our show and all their other awesome programming. There are some other awesome programs too. I don't know if you've been watching, but Boys and Girls Club has a great program Clubcast. on there. I've yeah. been a guest on You that. have, that's great. Right. So in addition to the show, there's a couple different ways wait, that you- Wait, 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 oh. let's stop. Oh, let look. Me do, look, I know your wardrobe is <laughs> malfunctioning, but let me do my part first. The purpose of this show, <laughs> besides to entertain and apparently make fun of ourselves, the purpose of this show is to connect the listeners and the viewers to things that are available to help children and families in our great community we call St. Lucie County. Now, clearly, if you haven't determined this already, <laughs> I'm going to spell it out for you. We are not radio show and or television professionals, but what we do at the Children's Services Council every single day, the entire team, the board, is five things for our community and those five things are one making sure every baby is a healthy baby two stopping child abuse before it happens by building strong families three keeping kids off the streets four keeping them in school and five keeping them off drugs alcohol and other risky behaviors so I apologize for interrupting you, but I, we cannot have a show you know, unless I name those five priorities. All the five things that you probably say in your sleep. I uh, <laughs> totally do. Also. So there should be a quiz that we should give to our, our listeners and our viewers, because I think they or should be guests. able to say them too. Oh, well, I'm going to give her a, a pass today. She doesn't have to do that too. But so Sean talked about those five priority areas. In addition to the show, there's a couple different ways that you can learn more about the programs that work in those areas. One of them is on our website, which is cscslc.org. We have a list of all of our funded program partners there, along with contact information for each one of them. And Sean brought props today. Um, so Props for the props. Props for the props. We also have a printed family guide that we share throughout the community. We've given out probably 60,000 copies of this in the last two or three years. We have a great advertisement for this show in the family guide. Um, and also a shout out to 211, who we talk about quite a bit um, on this show and out in the community. Uh, but this is a printed guide of all of our resources as well. So anytime that you are looking for a program, a resource for your family, for a friend, for a coworker, um, all of that is available in the family guide. And I would also say you can still call us too and ask questions or send us Facebook messages. Um, people do that from time to time if there's something that they're looking for. Um, we can always make recommendations there and as well. I, I'm glad you brought up Facebook. Well, you love Facebook. <laughs> uh, love is a very strong word when it comes to social media. I am on Facebook. Let's just yeah, say there that you go. Okay. But more importantly, Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County is on Facebook. We are. And so we post on there, I believe, almost every day. Just about. Close. But I, I say that because if you're on social media, and let's face it, I know you're on social media because how do you know what your friends that you went to high school with are doing <laughs> if you are not on social media? But if you are on social media, uh, make sure that you like Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County's page um, because above and beyond this show and the guide, um, we also post a lot of helpful hints and program information and just fun stuff for children and families. And let's face it, we want you to be part of our Facebook family. That's right. I will. I'm going to give one shout out because... This is a conversation we have a lot in my house and we shared something um, this week. Now that the kids are back in school, we're gonna start doing 10 things, which I'm really excited about. But the first 10 things that we shared was 10 questions to ask your kids. And I always, I tease my kids about this all the time because when I pick them up from school and say, how was your day? Meh, great. What'd you do today? Nothing. Yeah. Like the, it's the same answers every time. So this what was your list, favorite part? Well, Lunch. Yeah, yeah. Recess. Um, but this question gives it, this list gives ten very specific questions to ask them, so that you can kind of start that conversation. Now it might not work on teenagers because I have a preteen and it's questionable. But there's some really good questions on this list. My favorite one is if you had to give everyone in our family new names, what would they be and why? Oh, and what was the answer? Well, I haven't asked yet. Oh, okay. But I'll, I'll report back. I'm going to do that. Now, my kids are, you know, we, you, you started school. I did. And, and I started school in my household <laughs> in that I'm married to a teacher. My wife works in the school district, and my it's son's the, at college. So it's the same. School is 
is relative term, yeah. right? Yeah. But how, how did the start of school go? Uh, is this well, why we had wardrobe <laughs> malfunctions because it's the start of the school? So I, I won't lie to you, and I've had this conversation with you privately, but this year is very challenging for me thus far because my kids for the first time are at two different schools. So my oldest went into middle school and my littles are still in elementary school, but we are at two different places that start almost exactly at the same time. So pick up and drop off are almost exactly at the same time. And thus far, it has been very challenging. Uh, you know, until we master cloning, I think I you just have to work out a schedule. So we've enlisted help with Boys and Girls Club this week. So there's before and after care at my little kid's school. So we're trying that out. Well, I have faith that that's going to make it a little bit easier for us. But it's it's been it's been a little crazy. I think the start of school has been a little crazy for a lot of people. And your oldest is 12? 11. 11. So my oldest is 24, my youngest is 21. But I do, I can concretely say that those transitions, when they move from elementary to middle into high school, you know, we work on those transitions with those kids, but we also need to work on it with the parents. Yes. Because it's a whole nother level of, at least I found it to be a whole nother level of stress because as they get older, their uh, propensity to get into trouble or problems <laughs> seems to magnify They're if you different. will. They're yes, different. It's different yes. problems. Uh, luckily we have somebody that might be able to I know. You know we're setting this up perfect for our guests. But before we do that, uh, any other announcements we want to make? Well, I do just want to say because, in, and we have talked about this leading up to back to school um, as we normally do, but if you, like me, are uh, struggling with somewhere for your kids to be after school or you need a place for them to be, we have an unbelievably fabulous network of after school programs, um, some that operate on campuses of schools, some that have transportation from school to their location. So. If there's something that you're looking for, don't hesitate to look through the website or our family guide or, again, call and ask us if there's a place close to home or close to work or close to school um, because our after-school program network is great. Um, they work really well together. I feel like we've gotten really close to them <laughs> over the last year and a half. Um, but there is a place to make sure that every child has somewhere to go after the school day ends. And you know, when we talk about the school year, and I, and I promise our guests I'm transitioning <laughs> to you, <laughs> it's just going to take me a minute. Uh, I think as we, you know, we talked about the challenges of heading back to school. Um, and, you know, after last year, you know, going back to now in person for some families for the first time in over a year, there's some challenges. Um, and then obviously the fact that COVID and, and has kind of resurged because of this Delta variant and you know, you were seeing the numbers go up in hospitalizations. I'm just going to stress, and I promise you I'm leading to our guests, <laughs> but first of all, I want to make a stop at, I was thinking about this because uh, we've had COVID um, impact people very close to us. Um, and it's not just the health impact, but I'm a, let's assume, in, uh, you know, that everybody, you know, it may be sick for a bit, but gets better, but there is an economic cost to that, particularly if you have to go to the doctor and or the hospital. Um, particularly for young kids. And I say all that to say that if your children do not have health insurance, you see where I landed on that? I like if that. If your children do not that. have health insurance, now is a fantastic time to apply. We have a great program in the state of Florida called Healthy Kids. The only prerequisite is that you currently can't have health insurance for your children. Um, how much you pay is going to depend on how much you make. I can promise you that it's very affordable, even if you don't qualify for any of the subsidies. I've had many a family come to me and tell me that it's cheaper to get on Healthy yes. Kids uh, as opposed to getting on to their employer's health insurance for their child. We've also worked very hard to eliminate almost all the deductibles. Uh, so really all you pay is that monthly fee. And if you do qualify economically, you're going to pay about $20 a month. Um, and it's a, it's a decent uh, uh, break financially uh, uh, to qualify for that discounted rate. And I say all that because, you know, it's stressful enough having to deal with COVID. It's stressful enough having to go back to school. But if your child were to get sick or, you know, kids get in accidents and they break things. I know <laughs> I've broken many of things when I was younger. You know, there's a cost to go to the doctor to get that fixed and, and help alleviate that by getting healthy kids. And we have a great resource here in St. Lucie County. Uh, you can call Healthy Kids. It's all done online. But if you get stuck uh, or you need assistance or if you apply but you're not really sure if you got it or not, we have a local resource through the Treasure Coast Food Bank. Uh, it's in our program guide. Sherry Siegfried is mm -hmm. awesome. She is the person we refer everybody to, and she walks the families through it to make sure that you have the 
best shot and all your information's there so that your kid and your family can get covered. And I will say too, because some conversation that we have with people out in the community, for, for a while in our community there was, I, I don't want to say a stigma, but maybe a fear that there weren't enough providers yeah, that's on that list. That is not the case anymore. Um, we have plenty of providers, very good providers that are accepting the Healthy Kids Insurance plans. So. Um, it really is worth a phone call, even if it's just, it, even if you don't end up accepting it, but even just to see what the cost would be for Compared you. Compared to your, to your other yeah. options. Um, and I will say, you know, we talk a lot about, we have fun on this program, right? And we bring on all of our programs. Something that we don't really ever talk about, but what we also do is we work on policies, statewide policies that impact children. And we have spent <laughs> a lot of time, along with a lot of other partners, uh, working on healthy kids to do exactly what you said, yeah. to make sure that there's enough providers and that the deductibles aren't hitting families a second time on top of the right. premium and we've addressed a lot of those issues so now is the time to enroll in healthy kids or at least as you said to go check it out yes all right so that so, was sort of a segue to our guest yeah sort of it sort of made I that feel was a segue to our guest because we're going to our guest next. <laughs> well let's do it whether or not it was good or not is <laughs> judging by our guest she's thinking maybe not it's questionable so we are really lucky here in our community um and i think specifically in st Lucie county this it still feels like a new partnership for us. Um, Types and Teens is a wonderful organization that existed for a long time in Martin County. Um, we finally convinced them to move up here <laughs> after a, a lot of pulling. Um, but we're really lucky to have um, Laura Jarlando with us today from Types and Teens. She's the director of infant mental health, which we joke a lot about is like a weird thing to say because it's baby on couches. If you listening to them, right? That's <laughs> what people mental envision. health is very thing, but. Um, Laura is going to talk to us a little bit about sort of some of the things that we, we talked about at the beginning of the show. What back to school it is looking like for some families, um, kind of the stress that is involved for all parties of your family um, in that. And, and so thank you for joining us today. I know that was kind of like a yes. broad. <laughs> we only took 12 minutes to segue to you, but we're good. Uh, but Laura, really what this is, is this is a therapy session for my co-host here who you. is, you know, I Honestly, I think we're all struggling a little bit with back to school and all the all the pressures of time, COVID, learning, all that mounts, and it's impacting families. And you know, we would be silly not to recognize and and address it. Yeah, and I know. So you guys, you know, if we if we take a step back, Tykes and Teens does a lot of work in the community in regards to mental health. So. Well, just put that out there like any mental health issues that any families are having they can call you guys find out what services are available we fund several of them um, but specifically as it relates back to school like what conversations are you guys having with families right now what what kinds of things is it kind of what we we're talking about is that the same sure I think that like you guys said it's such a um, it's such an unprecedented time that we're living in and some children are going to school for the first time ever. Some children started virtually and are going to school in person for the first time. And then many kids have been home for a really long time. So um, one of the things that we did as an agency was created a, a Facebook series of um, topics that cover anything from anxiety to depression and really has tips to support parents, teachers, and educators on what children may be needing at this time, as well as what they might be needing to really support this big and very real transition. So I wanna ask you a question about that because when you say anxiety and depression in relating it to young children, I think sometimes those things present themselves differently than the ways we would expect to see anxiety and depression in adults. Sure. So what what does that look like? Like sure. if I if I'm looking at my child and I have a concern about what's happening with them, when can I think, oh my gosh, maybe this is something that I, I really sure. need to pay attention to? Well, how about I start by kind of giving you a, a inter introduction of what infant mental health looks Perfect. like. Yes, yes. So <laughs> infant mental health really encompasses the first five years of life, zero to five, and infant mental health, like any type of mental health, is something we all have, but children under five, their mental health is directly related to relationships, and primarily those, um, those uh, primary relationships. So we're talking uh, teachers at school, like uh, childcare staff or their, uh, their guardian. 
Um, so these children um, really rely on their caregivers to support them in recognizing and understanding their feelings, the world, whether it's safe to explore. Um, so that attachment piece is really what comes into play when we think about infant mental health. They're learning as their caregiver teaches them and how their caregiver responds or doesn't respond to their cues impacts how they see themselves and the world. That's a really good explanation and I, I feel like it's very black and white too. Um, and I think when you just said that my fear was as adults, you know, we talked about we're under a lot of stress too. It's, it's, it's unprecedented, it's very different. And the comment that you made about how we are responding to what they're doing right. um, is important. And right now with the level of stress that I think a lot of us are probably under as parents, um, that, that may look different than, than it has yeah. in the past. Absolutely, and that's something that's so important no matter if your child's in the zero to five range or zero to 18 and beyond, we are emotional containers for our children. So it's, it's something that we are responsible for and it's not easy. It's really hard sometimes to balance how we're feeling and then make space for how our child's feeling. And some of our children are more or less expressive about their feelings. So one thing I really encourage parents and uh, educators to do is really look for those children that aren't just expressing things externally, but there's a lot of kiddos that are very internal. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure we're asking children how they're doing and not assuming that they're doing okay especially with this transition. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that, because you, you and I are, are we, we host the show, but you're an extrovert, yep. I'm an introvert. <laughs> yep. um, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, because I can remember as a child, like everyone's like, oh, Sean, he's so happy-go-lucky. Inside, I was like, anything <laughs> but happy-go-lucky. So I'm glad that we're, we're talking about, you know, it's not just the external, but asking their feelings and their internal, because we do have a whole subset of kids that are introverted and aren't going to just mm -hmm. readily say, I'm in, you know, I need help or I need whatever. They're, you know, they're holding it inside because they don't know how to communicate it. And we, it's our responsibility to bring it out. Absolutely, we create that safe space. We open the door just to ask. And then we have some kids who have predispositions to be a little bit more anxious or a little bit more uh, on the sadder side. So we have to keep in mind those things when we uh, go into this experience of going back to school. There may be some kids that need more time for that transition and to develop routines, which take time in and of themselves. Well, and that right there is, I think, what has been the most challenging in, in my household for my family is that the routines that we had two years ago weren't the same last year, aren't the same this year, probably aren't gonna be the same next year, but that that's a lot. And, and for our kids who really thrive on the consistency and the reliability of what's coming, um, that that's tough. It's tough to get over the, un, the unexpected or the unknown. Yeah, and one of my other tips would be for, um, for children to really be um, supported by their parents in recognizing what is in your control. So we don't have control over this pandemic, right? But what are areas of your life where we can empower you to be in control? What are the things that you are able to be in control of? And so. you, know, you brought up something and you know, in my head I'm tying this all together with like social media and stuff. You know, if you go on social media, you can clearly tell that people are rational, nice, and very supportive <laughs> of each other. I am being sarcastic, <laughs> folks. Uh, but, but I think it's important because you said that children pick up on our emotions and our energies, if you will. And so, you know, everybody's like, oh, we're just gonna talk quiet around the kids. They won't be able to hear us. Kids hear more than we let on, or more than we sure. acknowledge, they understand more, and they pick up on our emotions and our feelings and our energies more. So I, I say all that, that as a parent, and I, you know, even with older kids, when you know, I have to like almost reset myself to make sure that I'm not giving off any type of pre-energy <laughs> or emotion so that I can be fully aware and open to what they're communicating to me. Right, and most of our younger kids are, are the ones who are experts with behavior, <laughs> right? Because they're still developing their language capacity. And so they're relying on our body language to help them understand that social learning of the world. So that's a really great point that you just brought up. So I want to go back to because you know we kind of touched upon it at the beginning, and then I, I just want to make sure that we we follow this through because 
I promise you there's people watching right now saying, she referenced some type of video series that I need to watch because I'm an educator, I'm, gonna go I'm a on. parent, right? So it's on your Facebook page, but can you, you yeah. know, tell everybody what to look for on their Facebook? Sure. It's also, uh, we're doing a six-part series. We started in July. Our last one airs, I think, this week, and it's actually one that I'm in. Um, and they are offered on Facebook, but you can also find them on our, um, our website as well. So they're posted now and they'll keep adding them as they go live. And what kinds of topics are you covering? Um, so we cover topics like anxiety, where we talk to, uh, there's some where we talk to young, young kids as well as teens to get their perspective. Like um, yeah. We have an expert with play therapy who talks about depression in young children. Uh, myself and our director of early child um, hood uh, mental health consultation, we talked about children zero to five and I kind of, uh, I was half an expert and half a new mom <laughs> whose child is going to daycare for the first time ever. For, and she's about 16 months old. So she's yeah. been very isolated. And so we talked a little bit about that transition for myself and what other new parents can do to, to get through that transition with yeah. their child. So our, our listeners and viewers, if you just Google Tykes and Teens, because I think that's the only agency I know that is Tykes and Teens, you can find it, or obviously on Facebook, look up Tykes and Teens. But I love what you said about the video series, because a lot of times people have video series and it's just one person talking. <laughs> because you have youth on there and children on there and giving their perspective. Yeah. I think that alone make, is going to make this stand out and encourage everybody to check it out. Well, and I think, too, there's, there's some, you know, a level of comfort that kids feel when they see other kids that, that are going through the same struggles or having the same concerns that they have. So I feel like that is, you know, a lot of times we feel like I'm the only person going through this. This is hard for me. But if it was happening to someone else, they'd be fine with it. And so I think especially for our kids, especially our tweens and teens, because holy cow, those years are, are hard. Um, but especially for them, knowing that other kids are feeling the same way as them is really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So while we're talking about kids going back to school, I'm going to transition for a minute to the parents. Um, what, like, if you're if you're friends with a parent, how, how, what's the sign that maybe they're struggling, <laughs> and or quite honestly, you know, because we we talk about mental health a lot, and I, I had a personal experience, and I thought I was the mental health champion, and then when they're like, your son needs to be, you know, in services, I was like, what? No, he's fine, because we still have these stigmas. Even if you're in the field, I, I was like almost embarrassed. I was like, oh my gosh, I totally have these stigmas. Uh, but what's what's a what do we need to look for in parents that maybe are struggling and like what's words to encourage them to get mm -hmm. help? Yeah, that's a great question. I think parents have such a strong responsibility and it that weight of making sure that their kids are doing good and that they're doing okay. I think there's just a piece around uh, empathy and normalizing their response to this as well, encouraging parents to check in with how they're feeling and reflecting on that. Um, and I think between provider to parent, I think that's also something that is really important. So even if I'm working with a seven-year-old, I can still check in with how that parent is doing because we know that how I'm doing as a parent impacts how my child's doing because they see the world through me. Right. So. Yeah, and I think too, you know, we've had a lot of conversation. Tykes and Teens has been an instrumental part of what we've been able to do in the mental health world in the last couple of years. Um, and we heard from a lot of teenagers that yes. they were craving services. Mm -hmm. they, they really wanted that support. Um, and sometimes their parents didn't agree or didn't see that light. Um, but I think to your point, um, we really have to encourage parents to check in with their kids, ask how they're doing. We, we have this idea that kids are resilient and that they'll, they'll be fine, they'll get over it. Um, and I, I think we need to make space for that conversation. Absolutely, and that's actually the purpose of our um, videos is to really help support resilience. And one thing we know is that connection to at least one safe adult makes more difference than no relationship at all. 
in success and resiliency. So we bounce back more from the distress of everyday life or the crises that occur when we have a safe person that we can go to. And so that's another tip I have is connection. So even if you can't find that connection uh, at school, are there any extra extracurriculars you can get involved with? Are there other people outside of school that you can connect to? At home, who can you connect to? Um, so connection is what we need, and it's it looks different now with the pandemic. And, and that's both for child and adult. <laughs> Correct. I, and, I, and I say all that because uh, when you say connections, I mean we we do a program called Kids at Hope that we help fund, and that's all about finding at least one caring adult for each child and everybody in the community can be a treasure hunter and be that caring adult. But I know uh, there's something in the health world called blue zones. Mm -hmm. And blue zones are identified all across the, all across the, the world. And in those blue zones, it's, it's communities where people are living 80, 90, 100 years old. And one of the, the biggest factors that they found was uh, the people that lived the longest had the most social connections. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I say all that to say that if you know somebody that's isolated, or, you know, we have a tendency as humans, when, when we get a lot of stress, we kind of shut down and almost isolate ourselves. To your point, be empathetic, reach out to them, um, and be that support. Even if you're just listening to them talk and knowing that there's somebody there, that can make the world a difference. And I also put a plug in for two on one, because if you are at your wits and you don't know who to talk to, even if you just want to vent, and, and Ashley's been on the receiving end, so my, by vets Same. <laughs> sometimes, and I'm so appreciative of that. But if you if you don't have that, you can always call two one one. They have somebody on there 24 hours a day just to listen and, and to empathize with you and and provide services obviously if needed, but also just to be there mm -hmm. if you need somebody to talk to 24 hours a day. And I think something that you just said too, you know, our connections look different right now. It's different for us. It's different for our kids, um, but. I think we have to recognize and move with that change um, that it, it's, it may be like that for a little bit. And we have to figure out what what is going to be the most impactful. We FaceTime with my mom and dad. My mom and dad live across town, but we FaceTime with them more now than we ever have because our time with them is, is limited. We don't get to see them as often or as frequently, um, you know, trying to keep them healthy, trying to keep our kids healthy. But I think there's just some things that have changed for all of us. Um, and so I, I appreciate that we have resources like Tykes and Teens and 2 on one and Kids at Hope that are working to make sure that we all have those connections and are able to continue those relationships. So we have like a minute left. <laughs> and so I just want to make sure that we're, we're providing all of our viewers. We've talked about a broad range of subjects, <laughs> but it's all about taking care of you, the parent, caregiver, but also your children. So can you kind of just run down, because Tykes and Teens has actually said it's just such a phenomenal resource. We we're so excited when you guys finally came to St. Lucie County. We bombarded you with programs <laughs> and contracts. Uh, but can you kind of go over what's the best way to get a hold of you? And again, that video series. Sure. So the best way to get a hold of us is to call our main phone number, which is 772 220 3439. So that's our main number, and you can be directed to whichever office you'd like to speak to. We have multiple offices. Um, our website is www.tykesandandteens.org, and you can find so many resources and other um, things that we've done in the community, as well as our Facebook series, which is a six-part uh, series on increasing resilience in our, in our families. Thank you so much, Laura, thank for coming you, on. And thank you to the entire team at Tykes and Teens for all that you're doing, especially now in St. Lucie <laughs> County. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, we want to thank everybody for listening and or viewing. Uh, reminder that it's a weekly radio program every Sunday on 104.5 The Flame at 10 a.m. and also on WLX TV once a month we come in here thanks to the wonderful partnership with St. Lucie Public Schools. And check out that video series, look up Tykes and Teens, and remember that it's our children, our community, our future. Now more than ever, folks, especially now more than ever, we're all in this together. We'll see you next time.